okay guys we have to do this we have to watch deadpool everybody has seen this film yaar and i have no clue bhai you can watch masti wale come on what about you i have already seen deadpool twice you know there is an end credit scene in the movie and in that they reveal that there is going to be a deadpool 2 and there is going to be a character called cable it's going to be awesome man what cable is he talking about yaar i want to watch deadpool yaar because i want to be cool too three kya cool hai three Now that Baldi has gone off to get married, there is really a lot of pressure on me. You know, I have to handle the show on my own, and it really shows because I've lost a lot of hair. Anyhow, 2016 is supposed to be the year of fast mobile connectivity in India. 4G is supposedly going to go prime time, and Reliance, the Mukesh Ambani Reliance Jio, is supposedly going to be at the forefront of it when it launches its state-of-the-art. 4G network in India in the second half of the year. To complement that, now Reliance has come up with these life series of smartphones, and they are pretty impressive. They've got a good design, and they have some interesting features. The big question is, can these phones match up to what is available in the market? Because the Indian market has really become saturated, and that there are lots of options available for users. So let's find out. Right off the bat the most striking thing about this device is its design because frankly it feels and looks very attractive it's got symmetrical lines and it has got a metal frame which is sandwiched in glass on both sides honestly it reminds me of Sony's Xperia line of smartphones at the same time this design does feel a little stale and rather repeated but there's no denying the fact that it is a really well built smartphone On the back you interestingly get two cameras a 13 megapixel camera and a 5 megapixel camera even the iPhone 6s doesn't have two cameras on the back so this is going to be a feature that you'll love to flaunt on the front it has got a selfie camera but it also has a flash out here so in low light situations you can easily use the flash to get some good selfies the best feature of this phone is arguably its display gets a 5.5 inch full hd display yes full hd is a pretty standard resolution but the color fidelity and vividness of this display is absolutely insane and fantastic colors really pop and they look vivid and the screen is very very bright so the legibility is never going to be a problem this display is certainly one of the best 1080p displays i've ever tested another great thing about this phone is that it is seemingly running stock android lollipop There aren't many customizations except for the fact that there is the Reliance Geo application which uh, isn't really intrusive. It also has decent specs. It's got a Qualcomm 8 core processor, it's got 3 GB RAM and 32 GB of storage. But despite that, seemingly the performance of this phone is very sluggish. And by that I mean animations are a little slow to animate and apps don't switch at a very steady clip. which is kind of unacceptable for a phone that costs 25000 rupees moreover these two rear cameras they're kind of pathetic because they are really slow to lock focus they actually take eons to lock focus and the picture quality is nothing impressive suffice to say this is not the phone you want to be instagramming photos from the main problem with this phone is that it is kind of overpriced For twenty five thousand rupees, there are several phones in the market which will do a much better job. In fact, phones that cost half the amount will also do a better job, and the Lay One S is a great example. Unless you are getting some great data bundles from Reliance Jio, there honestly is no reason to buy this phone. Man, I have to clean this table more than the device. Yeah, what a life! 
By the way, that is my underwear, yo. And it's a limited edition because it has never been washed. Ew! My hands are infested! I will have to cut this out. Here's the movie. So, another one of my own turns out to be divergent. Virtual reality has finally gone mainstream and there's no better way to get started than with the new Samsung Gear VR. It is a mobile virtual reality device developed by Samsung Electronics in collaboration with Oculus VR and offers a wide range of VR apps and games to choose from. The Samsung Gear VR is designed to work with Samsung's flagship smartphones which act as the headset's principal display and processor. Currently, the Galaxy S6, S6 Edge, S6 Edge Plus, Note 5, S7 and S7 Edge are all compatible with Samsung's latest offering. The Gear VR headset also includes a touchpad and back button on the side as well as a proximity sensor to detect when the headset is on and the volume can be adjusted through the volume rockers also found on the right hand side. Plus, the Gear VR has a focus wheel at the top so you can easily adjust the focus to match your eyesight. It appears to be bulky and may even look as if you have a giant set of ski goggles strapped to your face. But the Gear VR is actually quite light and fits very well on any head size and the soft foam padding around the eyes and nose bridge makes the fit very comfortable. All you do is strap the headset with elasticized velcro straps, one around the back of your head and the other around the top and voila, you're all set and ready for the virtual world. To get started, you'll have to snap your Samsung phone onto the front of the Gear VR so that the display faces the headset's stereoscopic lenses. Simply dock the phone into a micro USB dock on the left and then lock it in place with a plastic holder on the right. As soon as it docks into place, the handset will automatically launch Oculus Home. Since you're essentially pressing the phone's screen up to your face, there's a definite screen door effect as a result of which the videos look a bit pixelated and the games lack the sharpness you would expect. But the whole gaming experience is definitely more engaging and interactive than ever before. While the Gear VR experience may be extremely delightful, wearing it for long periods of time can prove to be taxing as it tends to make your head heavy. On the whole, the Gear VR is affordable, it's comfortable to wear, it has an easy setup and offers a wide variety of content. But on the downside, it's only compatible with a handful of Samsung phones, it drains your phone's battery and is not as robust as upcoming PC and console based VR headsets. But nevertheless, at just Rs 8200, Samsung's Gear VR makes for a great entry level VR headset for the everyday consumer. Now, what should I call Sahil this week? I'll call him Barbie doll. <laughs> Why are you so mean to me, man? You are always mean to me. It's so hurtful, man. Since you were getting married, I got you a gift and you have officially hurt my feelings. Fuck off, man. Fuck off. Oh, man. I feel bad now. But yeah, he did get me a present. I am mean. He's right. He's not. What? You called me fat. Did you get me a present? Huh? Uh huh? No? Think about it. The HTC Desire 626 is an oddity of a phone. A phone that gets by on bare necessities in an era of smartphone extravagance. Design wise, the phone looks great. It has a dual tone, playful aesthetic of other mid range HTC designs. 
Since it's mostly plastic, it feels light in the hand, but surprisingly sturdy and well put together. The build quality also doesn't feel cheap. The materials used here may be mostly plastic, but the phone still does feel premium. This is something that HTC does well, and they continue to do so here. Don't be fooled by the top and bottom speaker grills though. This one doesn't have boom sound. Another oddity and something that took us by surprise is the fact that 6 to 6 runs Android KitKat out of the box. While the nostalgia of the KitKat flavored Android logo is great, it's something that is seriously outdated now. Even the version of HTC's custom software Sense isn't up to date. HTC throws in its usual bells and whistles like blink feet, but it doesn't excuse the fact that 626 runs on KitKat in 2016. The display on the front is a 5-inch LCD panel which comes in at a 720p resolution. Full HD has pretty much become the standard now, but the screen here isn't too bad. It's actually pretty decent. The colors and contrast look great, but the screen just isn't very bright. As far as performance goes, the phone is decent. It's not a speed demon, but it will not give up on you in the middle of a heated gaming session. The interface itself also feels smooth and responsive with little to no lags. The camera on the back is below average. The photos lack detail and usually end up looking soft. The front-facing selfie cam isn't all that good either, producing grainy, unusable messes in low-light conditions. The battery life is decent though. It can get you through a day of moderate use on a single charge. You get 16 GB of internal storage, but you can expand that to 32 with a micro SD card slot. The 626 feels like a phone that would have been quite a contender if it was released about two years ago. As the smartphone market stands now, you can get so many phones that are better than what we have here. In the end, we have a phone that feels half-baked and stuck in the past, and that should be enough reason for you not to buy it. Gobi Parata! Gobi Parata! Absolutely good job! 50 rupees, we can have Gobi Parata. No game? I just heard with you. Why do you want 100 rupees? I have to go home also, no? For many, Street Fighter is the epitome of fighting games. Its relentless pursuit of deep game mechanics combined with memorable character and art designs has enthralled gamers worldwide. So it's little surprise then that there is a Street Fighter V. What is surprising though is the state that it's been launched in. Coming to the graphics of the game, this is the best that any Street Fighter game has looked in our opinion. Capcom decided to move over to the Unreal Engine 4 for this iteration and the results are glorious. Characters have detailed animations and character models along with tons of little quirks that make them unique. The backgrounds themselves, as with any Street Fighter game, are really dynamic too, featuring great animations. Similarly, sound also has great attention to detail with great combat sounds and music. The fighting itself feels the most streamlined of any Street Fighter game to date. It's also a lot more forgiving, relying less on complex, timing-based combos than previous iterations. The game also introduces a new V-meter, which builds up over the round and allows you to pull V-specific moves or augment the power of your existing moves and combos. The 
fights feel fast and tight, resulting in a cat and mouse gameplay system that is extremely fun. The game also runs extremely well with a solid frame rate throughout. What isn't so great, however, is the bare bones package that Street Fighter V is at the moment. As of the time of this review, we still weren't able to get a stable multiplayer game running. Of the times we did manage to, we had great fun. But most of our time was spent staring at the connection screen. And that isn't fun. There's also no arcade mode here, which is a huge mama. Which essentially means that there's no way to play this game against a CPU opponent. The story mode also is a joke to be frank and can be beaten by average players within an hour or two. The training mode teaches you almost nothing and the shop and challenge modes are slotted to come as a free update in March. Quick attacks that can link into each other for a small amount of damage. Both of these normals are very good up close. The character roster is also really slim at launch, with just 16 fighters. New fighters will be coming out soon as either paid DLC or for free. A detailed story mode will also be coming out in June. In short, most of this should have been here at launch. While the fighting itself is fun and far more accessible than it's ever been, Street Fighter V feels like a beta rather than a full game at the moment. With a list price of 2000 rupees, we would recommend that you wait till more features are added before adding this game to your collection. Here, did you see the 251 rupee phone? No, yeah, I couldn't. I didn't have change. <laughs> Often when you're scrolling through your Facebook news feed, you will find a post by a friend of yours which basically talks about someone passing away in their family. Now, it would be really insensitive to like that post. Normally, you would type out a condolence message. That's what most people do. Now, Facebook has actually been working on a solution to fix these kind of scenarios. Many believed it to be the unlike button. But that's not the case. Earlier this year, Facebook revealed that it was indeed working on a more nuanced solution which it calls reactions. And finally, it has rolled out the solution and it's there on the desktop and also on the mobile phone apps. So let's find out how it works and how cool it is. So on the desktop, all you need to do is basically look for the like button and hover over it and automatically you will see six reactions. You will have the like, a love, a haha, a wow, a sad and an angry emotion out here. So we can choose angry out here and it, it is showing angry. Interestingly, what happens in your notifications is that it clubs likes differently and reactions differently. So out here I've got 15, 16 reactions, 16 reactions on a post and it has around 10 likes. So likes are being clubbed differently and reactions are being clubbed differently. So that will have different but really important marketing implications for Facebook in the long run. On the phone this works a little differently. You just need to press and hold the like button and automatically all the reactions will pop up and you can just slide which one you want to choose. So here I am going to choose on sad and that's about it. It works pretty seamlessly. So instead of liking this video, maybe you can love this video now because you can do it. The recently concluded 2016 Mobile World Congress held in Barcelona offered some of the biggest handset launches to watch out for. We're not just launching our new phone. We're launching a new way of thinking about what a phone can do.
Samsung unveiled its two highly anticipated smartphones, the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. The S7 has a 5.1 inch screen and is water and dust proof down to 1.5 meters for up to 30 minutes. The other big selling point of Samsung's latest offering is its always on screen, which displays the time, date, notifications or a personalized screen at all times using very little battery power. The S7 Edge has almost identical specs but offers a 5.5 inch curved screen instead. LG announced its next flagship phone, the LG G5. The new handset is a huge step change in design. It is modular in nature, has a quad HD display, dual camera on the rear and comes with a metal body with a removable battery. Xiaomi used the Mobile World Congress to launch its new flagship smartphone, the Mi 5, which runs on Qualcomm's Snapdragon 820 chipset, has a 5.15-inch Full HD display and offers a premium design fusing metal and glass. If rumours are to be believed, the Mi 5 is expected to be half the price of its mainstream rivals. Man, somehow we managed to do the episode. Yeah. But we gotta unwind, man, because all work and no play will make us dull Jacksons. Let's do something, man. Saanso ki zarurat hai jaise zind. Oh, sorry, carry on. I had a heart. Tough thing. <laughs>